Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship on this second Sunday in the season of Easter. Jim, don't fret. Somebody's coming. Jay's here. I'm afraid you might have to sit alone there for a second. You felt low. <laughs> Welcome to worship. Uh, we have some an array of wonderful treats down there. So if you're at all, uh, have some time or even grab something to go if you want. There's uh, some wonderful brownies and things. I'm assuming that they came from Rosemary. So those look great. And uh, I came through Claire yesterday, so Cops and Donuts called my name. So I grabbed a few donuts on the way through. So help yourself. We keep some people in our prayers this morning. Uh, Dorothy Golfels, Fred's sister, is in Munson Hospital, back in Munson. And uh, so we're going to keep Dorothy in our prayers today. Gloria Sproul funeral is May 7th, the first Saturday in May. Uh, people of Ukraine, certainly the Shinner family in particular, in our prayers. Bev Leitz and Philip Turner, um, both in hospice care, we pray for them today. Um, Carolyn Bytel, Gail Crompton, Wendy Prattley, all struggling with cancer. Dennis Darling is in our prayers. Sam Robotham, Al Dobler, Ron Dykstra, and, and Brent Canop, uh, all in our prayers along with others. So lots of people to pray for. The flowers today are in honor of Rip and Lisa Steve. What? <laughs> so uh, thank you for the surprise. I looked at the uh, bulletin and I thought, flowers? I didn't do that. <clears throat> so thank you. And thank you to all of you. I, I don't say this probably often enough, but I tell other people that this is the best place to be a pastor. So sometimes they argue with me if they're a pastor. but I don't. So thank you for everything. A uh, few other um, thoughts coming up. Lutheran World Relief meets this coming Tuesday from 9 until noon. Uh, and if you have questions, you can see Rosemary, uh, Liz Crawford, and others who come. Uh, Trinity kicking off their youth worship service. That will be the four Thursdays in May, starting May 5th, and uh, 5.30 to 6.30. And uh, we had a volunteer to help with some tacos since it's Cinco de Mayo. So we're going to be having some taco celebration uh, afterwards on the 5th. Uh, Garden of Remembrance Work Bee is coming up, and that will be May 14th from 10 until 2. Is that right, Greta? Does that sound right, yeah, Rich? So um, you can come and help out. You don't have to be a member of the garden. They won't kick you out. They'll take your, your help. That would be great. You're kind of just doing the grounds of the church here to get ready for uh, summer. I think we had one day of summer, that was yesterday, and now we're back to, uh, to uh, snow in the forecast, which seems kind of funny. Any other words we should hear this morning before we begin? All right. Welcome to worship on the second Sunday in the season of Easter. Would you please stand as we prepare our hearts this morning? Oh God of unconditional love, you who show no partiality in respect to people or nations. We have heard your good news of great joy for all people. We hear that good news, and in hearing we come to believe. We know that you are sanctuary and a house of worship for everyone. As we worship you, knit us into a community, that we may celebrate our unity in faith and in mission, forgive our inability to move beyond ourselves and into a life formed by your love and your mercy. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and has made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen us now with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. It's with great, great joy that I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy and abundant in love, forgives you all your sin and grants you newness of life in Jesus Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <laughs>
and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood, and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will wail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Here ends the reading. St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated. So if I tell you about the benefits of yoga, are you going to show up to class tomorrow morning? I mean, if I really tell you the flexibility and the strength and you, you feel so much better, your body works, you don't have to make those noises ugh, when you get out of a chair, well, not as many noises as you uh, used to do, right? Flexibility and strength, would you believe it? So believing, it's funny, there's, there's two different levels of believing, right? One is where we tell somebody something and they go, okay, I believe it. But then the other level is where you tell them they believe it, and then it actually changes the way they love or forgive or extend mercy or show up to yoga class, right? That's, that's the difference. And that's the challenge, I think, with today's gospel reading, especially with Thomas. Thomas um, does this with his faith in God. Thomas doubts, he questions, and he disbelieves. He's not satisfied with secondhand reports. And it doesn't say it in the Bible, but I think Thomas is a little bit hurt, right? He comes, I always picture him out getting milk and bread, whatever, he's doing some errands. He comes back in, does the secret knock, they open the doors, that you, Thomas? Okay, they let him in because they're afraid. But this time when they let him in, when he comes back, they say, it happened. It's true. The stuff that the women told us, He's actually alive. He came here and he showed himself to us. He had 
nail marks on his hands and his feet. It was him. And Thomas says, I will not believe unless I see him, unless I put my finger in the mark of his nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. And what does Jesus do when he shows up the following week? I always expect him to berate Thomas, right? Jesus had to be questioning whether this was going to work, right? I mean, if he's going to ascend into heaven and the disciples are going to be going out and sharing, is he, they're going to be about as successful as me trying to get you to come to yoga class, right? That's the way it's going to work, it seems. They told Thomas. Thomas was a disciple. Thomas heard the teachings. Thomas saw the miracles. Thomas experienced all that. And Thomas says, I will not believe. He demands to see for himself. I think this is where we get the saying, seeing is believing, right? When someone tells you something and it's just too good to be true, you're like, no, nah, not unless I see it, right? Someone said, even if we saw Jesus, we would question it these days because we're so skeptical, right? And so Jesus would come and perform a miracle in front of us. And then many of us would say, that was pretty good, Jesus. Can you do it again in this time a little more slowly, right? So that we can see what the trick is. But what if believing is actually seeing? That's what Jesus proclaims today. Seeing is believing where we're in control and we can measure things and see things and verify things. But what if believing in God is actually the gift that comes to us so that we can see things that we previously could not see? Opportunities to love. Opportunities to forgive or extend mercy. Opportunities to help. Right? All of a sudden, when we have faith in God, these are the gifts that come to us. Jesus has risen from the dead, and he decides to pay the disciples a visit. They're behind locked doors because they're afraid that they're going to be next. Their fear has taken over. And what does Jesus do when he comes? He says repeatedly to them, peace be with you. This is not just a nice greeting. Jesus is actually giving them peace. And he needs to do it two times before they start to get it. And then for Thomas, he does it again. Peace be with you, right? And so he's actually creating a sense of peace. But he does something else. He breathes on them. And he says, receive the Holy Spirit. This breath that Jesus is breathing on them is God's breath. It's the breath that called Lazarus out of the tomb. It's the breath that healed the blind man. It's the breath that brought Jesus back from the dead. It's the breath in the book of Genesis that created all of life and all of the world. Let there be light. That's the breath. And there was light. So when Jesus says, peace be with you, and then there was peace, right? Because he's breathing on them. New life, new power, New start, second chances. What are you looking for this morning? Jesus is breathing on you and says, receive that. What are you afraid of? What are the fears that keep you behind locked doors? What are the fears that keep your heart closed? Right? He's breathing on you and says, receive the Holy Spirit. What is the block? What is the obstacle that's stopping you from life or from faith or from love? or from getting healthy, or whatever it is that we seek. What is it that is blocking us? Jesus breathes on that, and he says, receive the Spirit of God. This gift of doubt that Thomas has, and I think it's one of the best gifts we could ever receive, highlights the transforming power of God. If you don't have doubts and you don't call them and you don't recognize them and you don't wrestle with them, you're just walking through life and pretending that it's the words. You're like, yep, I like yoga. I think yoga's great. Yep, yoga's good. I've heard about yoga. But you don't actually go to yoga, right? Jesus is asking you to go to yoga, so to speak. He's asking you to love and forgive and extend mercy. This is the way that faith works. 
I know for some people, they just need to hear the word and they respond. And, and faith is sort of created in them. But for many of us, we disbelieve and we doubt and we struggle and we demand proof. And here's the amazing thing about Thomas. Thomas engages with his doubts. He doesn't try to hide them. I mean, when the disciples go, he's alive, he's risen, we saw him. He could be like, oh, well, that's good. That's great, you guys. I mean, he doesn't say this. He's like, I will not believe. And he focuses and he proclaims them. That's how we deal with them. So that he can go deeper into his faith. What is going to cause you this coming week to go deeper into your faith? It's going to be recognizing your doubts. I don't know, care what you call them. Doubts, shortcomings, fears, sins, brokenness, human imperfection. Whatever we call them, we have to recognize them. And then we can let God deal with them. Doubting Thomas gives us the most powerful confession in all of Scripture. Nobody else says what Thomas says when he comes in contact with Jesus. What does he say? He says, my Lord and my God. He says, my Lord and my God. No one recognizes Jesus and says God except Thomas. They say Lord, Messiah, King, you know, all sorts of names for Jesus. I think there's about a hundred in scripture. But Thomas is the one who recognizes him as God. And I think it's because Thomas doubted so deeply. Doubting Thomas should be called confessing Thomas. You heard me say it before that the opposite of faith is not doubt. The opposite of faith is certainty. Because if you're certain about something, if you know it's true, you don't have to have faith that it's true, right? Sue is sitting over here and she's saying today, I don't have to have faith that she did that. We all saw it. We all heard it, right? So there's no faith involved. The only time you and I need to have faith is when we doubt. So we gather together every Sunday in our doubts because it's a gift. It deepens us. It deepens our connections with God and with one another. If you don't sin, you don't need forgiveness. If you live a perfect life, you don't need God's mercy. If you don't doubt, you don't need to have faith. Doubt is our friend. It's the flip side to the coin of faith. You can't have faith without doubt. And so rejoice in your doubts, as Thomas did, and go deeper. Thomas came to believe, and his deep belief in Jesus allowed him to recognize Jesus as God. True, vibrant, amazing faith comes from the freedom to embrace our questions. For some, it's true, faith comes more easily, and for some, like me, it comes more difficult. Some just need to hear the testimony of Scripture, others need a more personal, direct interaction, and others yet need to wrestle and dive even deeper. Thomas is one of those. So this coming week, I encourage you, confess your doubts, at least to yourself and to God. Face your questions, speak of your disbelief, and God promises you this morning that he will hear them. He meets Thomas where Thomas is. He doesn't say, Thomas, I demand that you let go of your doubts and meet me where I am. He says, no, where are you at, Thomas? Thomas says, well, I really need to kind of touch the mark of the nails and put my hand in your side. And Jesus says, come on, come on up, come on and do that. I don't think Thomas ever did it. I think when Jesus said, come on, Thomas, do that, Thomas said, my Lord and my God, it's really you. God promises that he will hear our doubts. And perhaps he will even visit us and breathe on us and pull us into a living faith. And perhaps that living faith will raise us from the dead.
captivity to sin and death, we pray to God for the church, for people in need, and for all of his good creation. Merciful God, on this day of worship, we raise our voices in praise, even in the midst of our doubts. We also pray for the people around the world who need our support and love. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for those who suffer in Russia and other border countries who live in fear. We pray that peace might prevail, that you would protect the Shinner family, and that you would bring the needless suffering to an end quickly. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of grace, bring healing and strength to those who are sick or hurting or grieving. We remember the family and the friends of Rob Marshall, especially Nancy and Bob. We pray for the family of Gloria Sproul. And we also pray for those who struggle with their health. We remember Dorothy Goples and Bill Crawford, for Luke Iperly and Zach Wilson, for Bob Long and Dennis Darling, Al and Chris Stobler, Sheila Smith, Wendy Prattley, Angie and John Pop. Carolyn Vitale and Winifred Summers. We pray for Fev Leeds and Philip Turner, John Save, Ron Dykstra and Madeline Fackler, for Pat Erickson, Gail Mosier, Janet Brown, and Elliot Hammond. We pray for Vince and Chris, for Bob Cornwell, for Jeremy Burroughs, Ida Huell, and Sheila Bell. We pray for the people whose names we carry in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Dear God, we also pray for those around the world who suffer the ongoing effects of the pandemic. We pray for those who care for others and those who are sick. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for the flowers given today in thankfulness for Rick and Lisa, and in thankfulness from Rick and Lisa for the amazing congregation of Trinity. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the peace of our Lord be with you always.
In the night in which he is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us join together in the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The body and the blood of Christ given and shed for you. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and always keep us in his grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. take this opportunity to say thank you to Sue, not only for being here and singing today, but one of my favorite parts, I've told about 10 people this on Easter, was watching Sue direct the choir. Her face was really great. I wish we could have filmed that. Thanks, Sue. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup we have tasted the new heaven and earth where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of life who raised Jesus from the dead, who sends forth the Spirit to renew the face of the earth, be merciful to you and bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Now go in peace and serve the Lord. And, and feel free to eat the treats. Thank <laughs> you.